Hello, it's Barefoot Ginger. I'm trying to move my computer screen. It's glowing on my glasses. Or I'll just take my glasses off. <laughs> That's even better. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday. We finally made it. I'm just here doing some last minute stuff at my desk before I head out for probably a busy weekend. You can see that I... Let's talk about my right eye. So, I had my sick surgery in March, vision correction, went fantastic. I didn't even have a blip of side effects or complications. Fantastic. In fact, they gave me some Valium that day that I didn't need because they say they offer it to everybody because those lights coming at you sometimes can cause some anxiety and I don't get anxiety but I am a tiny bit no not a tiny bit a lot I am incredibly claustrophobic and you know the machines are kind of close to your face you're pretty open in the machines if you've had it you know the things anyway so they offered me a very small dose of a sedative and I accepted it now looking back on it I didn't need it but it's nice to have it. Anyway, so I had that done in March. And here we are. Yesterday was June 8th. So March 8th. So it would have been exactly two months. April. April, May, June. Three months. It's been three months. That's right, because I'm just about to go for my three-month follow-up. Anyway. So I try to stay light on the makeup. And today, pardon the face. Uh, this is the bare, the bare naked. The bare naked face. Ginger. Um, because I had an allergic reaction. I don't know if it was my makeup or what, but I was visiting a resident in one of my facilities yesterday and my I started to feel pokey. Like, I don't know if you wear contacts, but sometimes when your contacts turn or they're old and brittle, they can feel pokey, like there's an eyelash in your eye. And that's how it felt. But I was almost done with my day and I was going straight home. So I kind of, you know how you just kind of, you know, like that to see if you can find it with your finger and nothing helped. And so I could feel it starting to get worse and worse. And by the time I got in my car, this was about 3.30. My eye was watering. I needed to go to the grocery store, but I couldn't handle it. And I'm glad I didn't. Um, I just thought I just need to go wash my face, go take off my makeup. So I used my, my uh, makeup remover cleansing wipes and did a really, really good face wash with my, with my, um, face wash stuff. So I got my face all nice and clean and it didn't help. Um, and I looked, you know, you pull your eyelid down, you look in the mirror, you get really awkward with your face and your position. And I couldn't find anything in my eye. I couldn't see anything. Couldn't see an eyelash. I, you know, like that and all the things. And I did all the things. And I couldn't find anything. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll just sit down and I'll listen to, to a podcast. So I sat in the recliner and put my feet up closed my eyes for a few minutes. Benadryl made me sleepy. So I took a little bit of a cat nap, woke up, didn't help. My eye was bloodshot, completely red. The whole white part of my eye on both, the whole thing was just angry. And um, so yeah, that wasn't fun at all. And then um, I, thought, I don't know what else to do, right? I. I I take a daily allergy medication because I do tend to be super sensitive to hay fever kind of stuff. And so I hate to call it allergies because it's really hay fevery, like cut grass and cottonwood, and uh, there's lots of lots of that stuff going on in my neighborhood right now. Anyway, so I took the Benadryl, and I'd already taken my um, regular allergy medicine. I take that in the mornings, and so. I don't know what else to do. So I got a really cold washcloth, laid down on the bed. That didn't help. Um, so I was, and it was really sore. It, and and so here's why I told you about my laser, my laser eye surgery. I called my husband and I'm like, I'm about to like stab my eyes out. And he's like, no, you can't do that. You have bionic eyes. It costs a, a lot of money for LASIK. So um, I have really precious eyes right now. My precious are both of my eyes. So I was bound to determine not to rub them because at three months they're completely healed, but don't tell me that because I think if I touch my eyes, they're going to fall out. <laughs> That's me. 
just me. Nobody is telling me that. Nobody is trying to fool me. I am like, oh, I can't touch that. So it's a really good habit to break, rubbing your eyes and stuff. But I used to, like, when I'm cutting onions or, you know, I have dry eye or tears or whatever, I would just, you know, dab them. Now I use a tissue or whatever. Anyway, lots of different things. So I'm sitting there in the recliner, and I've got my fifth balled up. And I'm trying to do everything I can. I sit on them. I do this. I grab my phone, and I start playing a game, just trying to distract myself. And nothing is working because it hurts so bad. It's like a sandstorm hit my right eye. So I'm going to, oh, I can't do that. I'm going to show you, oh, my, and, I, and I have hair issues today. I'm going to show you the after effect. That's what my eye looks like now. So what happened, I don't know. I think it was just an allergy reaction. So um, I have this little tiny bottle of, um, over-the-counter allergy eye drops that I forgot about because I can't use them when I wear my contacts. And even though I haven't had my contacts for three months, I still just kind of forgot about it. So, um, I remembered that it was in there. And so late last night, I put some drops in and went to bed. Um, and I just put a podcast on and I just closed my eyes. And when I woke up, it was gone. That itchy sensation was gone. But my eye was all gooped shut. It was really, yeah, it, it was nasty. So I got in the shower, washed my face really well again. Now I have this red, angry outer part of my eye that is really sort of touch and inflamed. And so I stopped and got some Benadryl cream at Fred Meyer. So I've been, been putting this very carefully on my eye, not to get too close to putting it in my eye. And so that's why I don't have any makeup on today and that's why I look like I got socked in the eye. That's the real story. I got punched in the face. So I didn't go anywhere today, not because of this, but just because it was a really good chance to, for me to just kind of, you know, have a quiet day in the office. Today's my late day. Everyone else is gone. I'm the only one back here. So it can be kind of nice. No phones are ringing right now. Um, we all ha we're all allowed to have our own schedules, which is really nice. We can flex our schedules. And so what I do is I don't take a lunch and I just work eight to four. Um, but on f Fridays, I have to stay till five because somebody has to be here to man the phones. Or the front desk mostly. Um, and we don't have anybody right now. Our front desk person is um, taking some time off. So on Fridays we have no front de desk person. So I'm here kind of as a, you know, if somebody comes in and, and need, not, not just in general, but, but if somebody comes in wanting to talk to non-budsmen, that's what I'm here for. So... I just take the time when it's nice and quiet, you know, nobody coming in my office bothering me or whatever, to kind of get caught up on my paperwork. So, what does everybody have going on this weekend? We have a graduation party at Grandma Pete's house tomorrow. This is probably going to be the last family party. It might not be. I'm expecting it to be. There, It depends on how quick it sells. Um, one of her grandsons... And she just died a few months before his graduation. Um, just graduated from high school. And so everybody is coming over to have one last celebration at Grandma Pete's and celebrate his high school graduation, which is a big deal. Um, and I know they miss her. And it does feel kind of weird having a party in her house, in her kitchen, without her being there. Um, so we're doing that tomorrow. That's tomorrow afternoon. And then, um, so we'll probably go over there around 11 or so and just, you know, I need to dry mop the floors, 
tidy up the kitchen countertops, run some, you know, some Clorox wipes over all the surfaces. I'm not worried about COVID. It's just, it's been sitting, um, I mean, my son is a caretaker there, but I mean, he's a bachelor. So what does he eat? Hot Pockets and Little Caesars Pizza, let's be honest. So it probably could use a, a, a good once over with, you know, some cleaning supplies. So that's what we have going on tomorrow. And then I don't know what we're going to do on Sunday. Um, I want to get my bike going. It's almost put back together. But I do want to get that kind of resolved, hopefully, this weekend. Um, and then my goal is to ride, ride my bike every night after I get home from work. That's my goal. I have got to get myself fit. I've got to get my rear in gear, quite literally. I don't want to be diabetic. I don't want to be put in a position where if I have a need for a hospital stay that, you know, it's going to be a problem. I don't want there to be any health issues. I don't want there to be any reason that, you know, I'm going to be a burden. Um, I haven't gone to the doctor since the pandemic because I hate health care right now. I'm really struggling with that. I don't trust them. I don't like how they treated people. I don't like how they're still continuing to treat people. We still have doctors here that are requiring resident, uh, residents, listen to me, their patients to wear the mask. Yeah, I mean, for sure, for real. Um, and all of that should be past us. We should be to the point where if we want to wear one, we wear one. But there should be no more co coercion. And I'm not saying that my doctor does, but I'm saying that my doctor asked me to do things that were kind of, well, you know, questionable in the name of the pandemic and in the name of, oh, well, if you don't do this, we're going to pull your medical license. I, I, I get it. Fear gripped the entire world. Was there anybody, was there anybody in healthcare that stood up and said, I'm not afraid, bring it on. We're smart, driven adults who are capable of making informed decisions. Nobody said that. And so here we are, three years later with people who no longer trust, I mean, healthcare was hanging by a thread before that, you know. Um, but now here we are. That one piece of hair, you guys, where's it gonna go? Which side I think it's supposed to? I'm growing my hair out, so it's gonna be its whole new journey. Uh, so you're gonna see many sides of, of the Barefoot Ginger's hair. Anyway, so that's kind of a rough outline of what we're doing. So Sunday, hopefully we'll work on my bike. Maybe take the dog to the park. Not the dog park. I hate the dog park. Dog parks are horrible. Do not take your dog to the dog park. Have we had anything bad happen? Oh, I wouldn't necessarily say it was bad. Um, my dog is a big girl. She's a, a retriever. And she has a pretty high prey drive. And she loves to chase her chuck it. A chuck it is a brand of ball. It's a anodized rubber, special rubber. It's not rubber like a racquetball, but it's a rubber kind of like material. That's specifically designed for dogs, especially with dogs with a really strong chew, chew, chew drive, right? So she chases it and she bites it and she brings it back. And so we were at the dog park. Um, it's been, probably been, I don't think we've been to the dog park in five years, but when we're there by ourselves, we're fine. But it's when other dogs show up, they steal her ball, then she has to roll them. Even though she's not mean, she has to roll them and she has to let them know that that's her ball. Hold on. Bend down and get this. Um, and it's the people attached to the dogs that are just careless. We had a batch of individuals who would bring their dogs to the dog park and then they'd, they'd all sit over, they'd congregate over on the tables and vape and gossip and their dogs were just running amok and they were stealing my dog's ball and um, not giving it back. And so finally she pinned one of them to the concrete to get her ball back. 
And these were millennials entitled young, stupid people who would have made it a big deal. They would have made it about my dog. So we left and we've never been back. But we take her to, we call it the park, but it's really a privately owned baseball field that allows people to bring dogs as long as you use common sense leash, pick up after them, well-mannered, all those things. Um, and I can run her hard and drop her <laughs> in like five minutes. She's done. Her her tongue is hanging out. She's slobbering. I can do that hard in five minutes. Um, throwing the chuck ball It has this handle, so you can just pick it up off the ground and you don't have to touch the slimy ball. And, I, and, and it also lets me throw it farther because you, you can just kind of wing it. Um, so we'll probably do that. Yeah, don't ever take your dogs to the dog park, you guys. Even the little dogs. There is no good reason for dog parks. Dogs aren't. Dogs that go there aren't. Ne Some are. I'm not saying this is exclusive how all dogs are. But enough dogs go to dog parks. And just watch any YouTube video about what happens at dog parks. Dogs pick fights with each other. Owners pick fights with each other. Um, people bring their unsocialized dogs. Dogs get territorial, so many things. People just, people are creeps sometimes and bad things happen at dog parks. There's so many other places to take your dog. Find a wide open field. If you live in this city, um, drive 10 minutes to find a rural um, city park. And even if you can't take them off the leash, most dogs are welcome in city parks as long as they're on leash. Um, and go for a walk at a park. Don't, please, I beg you, don't take them to the dog park. Plus, if, if they're sick, if they have kennel cough or parvo or distemper, um, they are putting the other dogs at risk. We adopted our dog, and she was a shelter dog, and she had kennel cough. And we literally didn't take her anywhere for like three months, making sure that she was feeling better. If we had taken her to the dog park and be like, oh, she's done with antibiotics, but she still had the snotty nose and the cough and, you know, miserable eyes and all that. Who knows if she's still shedding the virus. So just don't, don't take the chance and, and just don't go to the dog park at all. Don't, don't do it. There's that glare. Let's see if that's better. So... Yeah, so that's really how it is today. We'll we'll uh, see how this weekend goes, and I'm just gonna kind of see how everybody else is doing. I want to hear. People aren't commenting on my videos, and I'm not sure why. Well, because I don't have very many subscribers, but I've had 105 views, which means people are watching them. They're just not commenting. I'm not sure what's going on. I want that dialogue. I, I, I want this to be a place where we can talk about things. We're adults. We're going to be kind to each other. But I want to talk about things. I, I love civil discourse. And I love a robust discussion. So if you're a fan of dog parks, change my mind. So, all right. I'm going to get back to it real quick. This has been a, a cool 20 minutes. So it's going to be a short one today. I don't know if there's anything extra I want to add or whatever, but um, yeah. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. You're loved. You're special. We'll talk later.